right, so we're going to do number five the right way, which is find a set of three vectors that, uh, so we're going to add a, a vector to the set, but keep it linearly independent. So again, our set is u is 1, negative 2, 3, v equals 3, oh, 1. We're going to choose w to equal the right normal vector. So this is what we got when we cross. So this is our normal here. We crossed u and v. You can scale your normal vector down uh, much smaller, uh, as small as you want. So I'm going to... Divide by two. Yeah, exactly. Divide it by t uh, negative two. Or actually re regular two. So I'm actually going to go uh, times a half or over two. Uh, so we're really going to do negative one, four, three, like that. So we could check the... Uh, C1u plus C2, C1u plus C2v plus C3w. And we're going to see this should only have, if this is independent, it should only have the trivial solution, 0, 0, 0 for these three c's. So we got 1, negative 2, 3, 3, 0, 1. So same first moves, 2 plus 2, row 1, minus 3, row 1, like that. Mm -hmm. So copy row 1, row 2, 0, 6 plus 0 is 6, 2, we have negative 2 plus 4 is regular 2, 0. 0, minus 3 times 3 is minus 9, plus 1 minus 8, 3, positive 3 plus 3 is 6, and 3 plus 3 is 6, yeah. Alright, now here, let's go turn this 6. I want to try to avoid fractions. Mm -hmm. You can certainly divide both of these or multiply both of these by a half. So let's get the numbers a bit smaller. Okay. This I'm going to go negative a half just to force it to be that okay. to be positive. Um, So I could multiply this by a third, get one, and then subtract here. There's another way, to, better way to get one here, or here. Let's go take the three, so we'll go minus row two. So we'll use this three, four minus three is one. That's how we can get a one without going into fractions. And can you think about it like subtracting rows, or do you need to think about it like multiplying by a negative one and adding the rows? I know it's the same thing. Yeah, either way. Okay. Uh, I generally try to not think of subtraction, so I just think of adding negatives, but okay. um, I kind of go either way. row two. There's another good reason to write what you're doing so that if you get distracted, <laughs> you're, you can come back. I do extra notes just so I'm, I'm super clear on it. So we got minus row two. So we have minus one, minus three is minus four. All right, now I can swap right here. So we're doing the row swap. Mm -hmm.
that. Now we can use that one and knock out everything else in column two. Minus three, row two, minus three, row two. So I'm using this one and knocking out everything in the oh, column. I see. I see. One, zero. Minus three just minus four is positive 12. Minus one is positive 11. And zero, one, negative four, zero, zero. So minus three plus three is zero. Minus three times minus four is minus 12, positive 12. Plus one is positive 13. All right, I can stop here. Uh, maybe I'll go one thirteenth. Because we have one equals zero, and that is no solution. That is well. It's a. It is solution. It's the trivial solution. So I could keep going here. Oh, because that would be like z equals zero, not yeah, not zero equals one. And the way, I, the way I look at it is, this one knocks out everything else in the column, because you got zeros over here. Mm -hmm. So this will destroy the rest of the column. Yeah, yeah. This okay. is already taken out, but then, then this one would be free to destroy everything above it. So I can stop here and say, right there, they're all zero. So we only have, and that's the only solution. We've got no free variables, which is the important part. And that is linear. So this is our only solution is everything is zero. So this is independent. Independent. So there we go. There are other choices. Uh, any non-zero multiple of W would be a valid choice. Uh, and there still are other choices, like you have your two vectors like this. I chose uh, perpendicular. Mm -hmm. I could have chosen any uh, not just like straight up out of the plane, but any vector that's not in the plane. So there's really an infinite number of choices. The standard one would be the perpendicular one that's pointing straight up. Okay. All right, number six, write a system of equations that come from the three vectors. So U, V, and W with this vector in the span. So to so show this uh, vector 5, negative 4, 7 is in the span. This is in the span of u, v, and w. So what is the span? It's all linear combos. C1, u. I'll write in u was 1, negative 2, 0. No, 1, negative 2, 3. Plus C2, 3, 0, 1. Plus C3. This is why I chose the smaller, C, uh, uh, the best w I can choose within reason. So I have the smaller numbers, um, negative one, four, three. Uh, such, such that C1, C2, C3 are real numbers. So that's the definition of the span. It's all linear combos. Uh, so how do we show this is in there? We want to show a particular C1, C2, C3 will actually make up this one. So we want to solve C1, C2, plus U3. Well, no, we don't want a zero, zero, zero. Now we want, we want this, guy. this guy. So how do we solve it? Line it up in a matrix and row reduce that matrix. You want to do this row reduction here? Uh, no, it's okay. You sure? Yeah. All right. So the moves we make are literally going to be 
Can you just blast through it real quick, Sam? Yeah. Um, I'm pretty good on those, but just so we get to an actual answer that we want. Yep. That way I don't get home and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Oh, so number seven is um, set up. You leave him alone. You leave him alone. I don't want to discipline you again on camera. Three matches and six easier off. Uh, oh, so six is not solve. It's so we basically answer six. Seven or solve with six. Yeah. So this is six is set up. Seven is solve. Okay. All right. Now I don't know how his row operation notation is. I mean, I know what his operations are. There is no. I don't have operations. There are operations. Yeah. Like they're not mine. Um, so whatever notation um, you need to use. I don't think he really cares. Yeah. I mean, usually, whatever notation you use, it should be somewhat clear to see. Um, Mine's pretty explicit how I do it. Um, we can pause it and I can run through it if you want. Um, you should show me after this. Um, so I'm going to knock out. I always go column one first. Mm -hmm. Most people go column one first. I like to finish uh, off column two if I can, and then uh, column it by column. He was going to do that. Don't do that. No. You're going to create a monster. Oh. Okay, we're going to go Stop it. So, so we're solving, we're doing using the one to knock out the negative two and the three. So it's zero, six, negative two plus four is a regular two. Now we gotta deal with the third column. Don't forget about it. It was zeros before, so I just sort of blew through it and it was always oh, zero. Okay. But now I gotta focus on it. Ten minus four is six. Now minus three, row one is zero. Minus three minus nine plus one is eight. Minus minus nine plus one is minus eight. Three plus three is six. And negative fifteen plus seven is negative eight. Now we'll do the same trick we did before, where we'll um, I'll do things a little different order. Before I multiplied by a, a half and a half basically. I'm going to use this six. I'm going to go plus uh, row two right here. So it may seem like an arbitrary choice. So I'm using the six to make the eight closer, negative eight closer to zero, okay. or closer to one. Uh, so we get minus two, minus two. Eight and six minus eight minus two. Now I'll go one six and a half. Oh, I see. So we'll get there the same way. No, or okay. We'll get to the same place. Yeah. Zero one. Oh no, that should be a half, not a six. Other one would be deep into fractions. So that should be a three. One. Three and oh, I need negative to make that negative. So it's positive one, negative four, positive one. And now I got my one. Now we're just gonna do a swap and then we'll finish column two. Sometimes you gotta do a little extra work, but avoiding fractions, you can do that until pretty much the end. And always avoid them all the way. All right, minus three, row two, 
times 3 row 2 minus 3 row 2. One zero, so minus three times four twelve minus one is eleven. Minus three plus five is two. So one negative four one zero. So minus three plus three is zero. Minus three is positive twelve plus one is thirteen. And minus three plus three is zero. All right, so 13, we'll turn it into a 1 with the times 1, 13. Now, I'm going to use the 1 to knock out column 3, minus 11, row 3, plus 4, row 3. And I got zero here, so won't change anything over here. So one, two, and we are done right there. I got C one is two, C two is one, C three is zero. Sure. Cool. Uh I'm a little skeptical. That looks a little too easy. Uh, however, I have a strong feeling that we probably picked the numbers that were used to um, create this. Cool. Works for me. So we're probably right on the heels of, of the professor at this moment. Works for me. <laughs> uh, now, I want to make sure that it's really high chance. Well, not really high chance. There's a decent chance that we made a mistake somewhere here. So let's go ahead and see, is this really true? That's my next question is where do we plug those back in to, to check that? So C1 is our scalar here. And so we do one times this. This doesn't look good. Oh, two. That's why. Oopsies. <laughs> C1 is two. Okay. <laughs> I think I said C1 and wrote one. So C1 is two. C2 is one. C3 is zero. All right. Now I put a two in here. So we get two. Okay. One, negative two, three, plus one times three, oh, one plus zero equals. I'm just writing zero because yeah. our coefficient was zero, so it's going to be have a zero contribution. So that's our vector zero. Yeah. Zero vector. Yeah, so I wrote a super zero instead of uh, the vector zero. So we get two plus three, negative four plus zero, six plus one equals five, negative four. There we go. So we got it. So that was number seven. And last up. Now we're going to think about four-dimensional space. All right, no problem. Could you have a set of five vectors, linearly independent uh, vectors in R4? So can we have five vectors in four-dimensional space that are linearly independent? How many vectors, how many linearly independent vectors do you need to span R4? Expand your vectors from number five by adding a zero in the fourth component. Try to find a large, as large of a set of independent vectors that you can using those vectors. All right, so those are what we call embedding vectors. So we're going to take or extending vectors. So, you know, if, if we have, it's easy to think in two dimensions going to three. Like you got some vectors that are written on a paper that have no height, no Z coordinate. So what you do, what you could do is say, okay, I'm going to put them into three-dimensional space by adding, uh, adding is not the best word, by embedding them, and I'm going to pick Z, their Z coordinate to be zero. Okay. So I'm going to sort of create a third, an, an extra dimension. So you're including another vector that is zero. I'm not including, I'm including another coordinate into each vector so that they go from living in two-dimensional space to living in three-dimensional space. So I'm tacking on an extra coordinate to each vector. Okay. And the specific way we're doing it is we're tacking on a coordinate of zero. So U starts out similar. One minus two, three, zero. V, three, zero, one, zero. Do we use our same 
from number five. Three, so we're using our three, our three vectors. U, V, W is going to be, uh, make sure we get the right W. We did like a modified, we didn't quite use the normal, we used a multiple. Negative one, four, three. Now, I would spend more time checking and being careful you copy your vectors because you make one mistake here and everything else you do is wrong. So we got UV and W, and these are all in four-dimensional space now. So if we think of, could we have five that are independent? So I'm, I'm going to just use X and Y for a second because... That'll just go in order, U, V, W, uh, X, Y. Is that alphabetical order? That started A, something like that. So we're gonna let X and Y be in. So the fast way to say they're four-dimensional vectors, you just say they are elements of four-dimensional space. So you could write X as X1, X2, X3, X4, and y as y1, y2, y3, y4, something like that. So they're gonna be four dimensional. The question is, can we have five vectors in four dimensional space that are independent? So if we read our linear combination of all these vectors, c1u plus c2v plus c3w plus c4, x plus c five y equals zero. So the question is, if, if here's the linear combo, if they're equal to zero and there's only the trivial solution, we are independent. Now, without writing out the full, so I'll write out, so there's four components in U, I'm gonna write a matrix, but I'm not gonna fill in the actual values. So there's just four components. I'm gonna think of just, there's gonna be four numbers there. Four numbers for V, U, V, W, X, Y, augment with actual zeros. Okay. So we got you know, C1 column, C2, mm -hmm. C3, C4, C5. I haven't seen this before, so if we get too crazy, we'll have to use more. How many... Can you make any statements about the number of free variables just looking here? Thinking about, like, that... If there's a... We can get a 1 here, which we could. It would lock down C1. Just sort of go down mm -hmm. the diagonal right there. So there'd be one free variable here, right? At least, yeah, guaranteed, yeah. no matter what. So just on a dimensional viewpoint of the number of vectors, we are guaranteed to have, uh, depending on how it works out, either C4 or C5 will be free. So we have a set of five layer, I think that gives us one more. So the answer would be yes, right? Could you have five? Linear independent no. vectors out there. No. You're going to get a free because variable. Because one of them is a free variable, yep. which is dependent. Yep. Okay. So that answer would be no. So that's the five vectors. So the answer is not five. It's going to be four. Uh, yes. Okay. So you basically need the same number of vectors as dimensions, and they need to be independent. Okay. So we're in four-dimensional space. I need four vectors. Can I write that down? Yep. So we have too many vectors to be independent with five. Okay. That and makes sense when you put it out like that. Yeah, that's, it. that's how you want to think about it. You're like, oh, we have five vectors, five columns, but we only have four rows. So C... The way it will most likely work out, C5 is going to be free. Okay. And you see that like right there. So that's yeah. that's the one I would expect to be free. It may work out that just so happens that uh, 
C4 is free and C5 is not. And it's not asking for to solve which one is free. It's just asking is well, one free. Yeah, so we don't. I don't, don't, have I don't know. They didn't give me any information on X and Y. Okay. So I, I, with this setup, it could go either way. It could be you could give me crappy vectors that were already inside the span of U, V, and W, and it, we could have two vectors that uh, that were both that both could be removed okay. and not lose. Of course, if these, so if you can make up Y off these three, and you can make up X off these three, they don't bring anything to the span at all. So our subspace spanned by U, V, and W would actually be three dimensional then because these vectors are extraneous. Okay. So I need to pick a good fourth vector to make it independent. And then the question is, which vector is good? And just like everything else we did, there's an infinite number of choices. So there's an easy choice, though. So if you want an easy way to write this, if... I like to think about just the way the matrix is, so rows and co columns, about the dimensions of it. So if we think in terms like that, we got filled up with zeros, however many we have here. So I said before we're going to use m vectors in n-dimensional space. So our dimension is the number of rows in our matrix, okay. and m, number of columns, is the number of vectors that we have. Can we write that over here? Yep. So we have m vectors, and v1, v2, vm inside n-dimensional space. Okay. So if you have more columns, like you got extra columns, then you have rows. So you get more columns than rows. What you're going to, your matrix is going to be wide, short and wide. And you're going to kind of, okay, you're good to go until you hit yeah. that. So you're going to get free right here. Okay. And you know, if you're really wide, you're going to get, you can get a whole lot of free. Yeah. variables, but I sort of over-exaggerate with how wide no, it is. No, that's perfect, yeah. Um, now, if you have the opposite, in a, if M is small, you have a tall matrix like this, and there's, you could still, you could still have um, a free variable, but the chance, chances are you're going to run out of uh, columns uh, before you can hit to the bottom row. So you can still have deep dependent, but you're much less likely to have free variables. Okay. So free variables are possible. But unlikely. So free variables on this wide matrix are guaranteed. Okay. Which implies linear ind uh, dependence. As soon as you have your first free variable, you know you're de dependent. Because you can just choose that free variable to be not zero. And there's your non-trivial solution. Okay. Uh, if you have no free variables uh, and and u equals zero, what that means is each variable is locked down and forced to be zero. And so free variables are possible but unlikely. And of course, free variables imply dependence in a homogeneous equal to zero system. Homogeneous equal to zero linear system free variables imply uh, linear dependence.
Now if m equals n, um, you, could, you could be in a situation too where it just works out that you end up exactly in the corner. So when you have extra, um, or w when you don't have many columns or have the same number of columns in rows, it can go either way. Okay. It just kind of depends on how it all works out. Okay. But if you got too many columns, you have too many vectors in a smaller dimensional space, you're guaranteed there's gonna be extra ones. Okay. So that's, that's the reason why five uh, vectors in four dimensional space guaranteed will be dependent. Okay. Um, now the question is what fourth vector could we add to that set that we saw before that is going to be independent? writing on paper, not hard services. Two minute break.